we will continue with our discussion on pause tagging, which was explained to be a very important task in uh, natural language processing. And what we have seen before is how to do this task through machine learning methods, in particular through the application of hidden Markov model. We did uh, HMM for part of speech tagging and also saw how the Viterbi algorithm is used for uh, obtaining the correct part of speech tag. In today's lecture, we would like to take up some of the issues in natural language processing as they appear in Indian language processing. We will take example from Indian languages, in particular Hindi. Later, we will look at other languages of the country from the south, Dravidian languages from the east, uh, Bangla and Tibeto Burman, Oriya, Assamese, these kind of languages. So, the issue is how to do part of speech tagging for a non English language. So, let us uh, proceed with the material. We have seen that uh, part of speech tagging is done through the annotated uh, corpora. Annotated text corpora, you remember, are uh, those which have annotations in them. In particular, for part of speech tagging, we have a corpora which are tagged with part of speech. For example, noun, verb, adjective and so on. Now, I mention here some of the important text corpora for English. American national corpus and British national corpus are extremely large corpora, which are for English and uh, they have uh, lots of text uh, from different domains, which are tagged with part of speech. Bank of English is uh, from the financial domain, a number of uh, documents are uh, available, which are again part of speech tagged. Uh, corpus of contemporary American English is uh, for modern American prose and they are also part of speech tag. You can see it is a very large corpora with 400 plus million words 1990 to present which means uh, mid to 2000 and this is freely searchable online. Brown corpus is uh, very famous because the task of part of speech tagging through machine learning methods was uh, uh, possible because of uh, Brown corpus. This is about 1 million words of English and uh, they have part of speech tags in them. Similarly, international corpus of English, Oxford English corpus, Scottish corpus of text and speech, all these are very valuable data for applying machine learning to natural language processing. What is the Indian language scenario? For Indian languages also, there is a lot of uh, initiative from the government to produce uh, natural language processing systems, in particular uh, machine learning based methods. And uh, we would like to uh, also apply natural language processing techniques for processing of Indian language. Now, in, in the government of India scenario, most of the documents have to be present in three languages, the state language, English and Hindi. So, it is uh, necessary that translation, automated means of translation are developed with all seriousness and uh, natural language processing research with focus on translation happens. So, as mentioned before, part of speech tagging happens to be a starting stage for any natural language processing. So, Indian language part of speech tagging is happening under a large scale nationwide project called Indian language to Indian language machine translation. I mentioned it in my uh, transparencies. So, Indian language to Indian language machine translation is a very large scale effort. Uh, multiple institutes across the country are involved in this task in a consortium mode. Uh, the short form is ILILMT and the part of speech tags developed under this consortium 
have become the standard for part of speech tagging of any Indian language corpus. And uh, this IL corpora will be freely available for research purposes across the country. Proceeding further, we find that uh, Indian language to Indian language machine translation system is uh, funded by the Department of Information Technology, Government of India and it is a very large scale effort developed by the a consortium of institutes, which involves uh, Triple IIT Hyderabad, University of Hyderabad, CDAC Noida and Pune, Anna University, uh, K B Chandrasekhar Center at Chennai, IIT Kharagpur, IIT Bombay, IIS Bangalore, Tamil University, Triple IIT Allahabad and Jadavpur University. So, one can see that these institutes cover the length and breadth of the country and have uh, a very large representation in terms of all major languages of the country. One can also see the mention of uh, different pairs of language on which translation systems have been built. So, this system is called uh, Sampark and uh, this has developed lot of large scale corpora with annotation in them in uh, part of speech tag form. We take examples of various tags and uh, as they are used for Indian language processing. The examples are from Hindi and later we will take examples from other languages also. As is known, the most important uh, uh, category of words in, in any language are the nouns. Okay. Nouns carry a lot of information and uh, verbs, uh, prepositions, conjunctions, etcetera serve to link these nouns together and piece this information together to convey a consolidated large meaning. We see here noun has been mentioned and uh, there are different categories of noun like common noun, proper noun, verbal noun and something called n lock which we are going to explain very soon. So, under noun, we have these examples, they are from Hindi, they are in transliterated English. It is written so that uh, anybody could uh, look at the words. Of course, the Devanagari strings are also uh, there to represent these words. The first word is larka, which means a boy, second word is raja, which means a king, the third word is kitab, which means a book. So, all these are nouns. Now, under noun, we have the first category called common noun. So, the basic tag here, the basic symbol which expresses this category is n okay. and then common noun is n n, proper noun is n n p, verbal noun is n n v and uh, location uh, and time specific noun is n s t. Let us go over them. So, kitab, uh, kalam, Chashma, these are common nouns. Kitab is book, kalam is a pen, chashma is the spectacle. So, these are common nouns and the part of speech tag which should be inserted for this is n underscore n n. Now, the proper nouns are the names. For example, Mohan is a common Indian name. So, are Ravi and Rashmi and the tag for this is n underscore n n p. The symbol before the underscore is the top level category and the subcategory is given after the underscore. N n is common noun, n and p is proper noun. N and v is verbal noun. In Hindi, we do not see this phenomenon. In Dravidian languages, we see the occurrence of verbal nouns and we will uh, remark on this category later. This is a particularly Indian phenomenon, uh, namely loc n lock or locative nouns, nouns of time and space. For example, the word upar, which is above, niche, which is below, age, which is in front of, piche, which is behind, all these are very peculiar words because they can serve as noun also. They are adverbs, okay. They also can serve as noun because they can take case marker. For example, uh, one could say upar ka kamra, the room above okay? or uh, let us say niche ki siri, the staircase below. Okay? 
आगे का घर द हाउस इन फ्रंट एंड सो ऑन सो ऑल दीज वर्ड्स बिहेव एज नाउंस एंड दे कैन टेक केस मार्कर ऑन द अदर हैंड दे ऑल्सो एक्ट एज पोस्ट पोजिशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल घर के ऊपर का छत द टेरेस ऑन टॉप ऑफ द हाउस ओके पहाड़ के नीचे का बंगला द बंगलो बिलो द हिल ओके सो दिस काइंड ऑफ यूसेज शो द यूज ऑफ दिस वर्ड्स एज पोस्ट पोजिशन लिंकिंग टू नाउंस सो दिस पिक्यूलियर वर्ड्स हैव डबल रोल दे कैन एक्ट एज प्योर नाउंस एंड दे कैन ऑल्सो एक्ट एज पोस्ट पोजिशन दैट्स वाई दिस स्पेशल कैटेगरी फॉर दैम एन अंडर स्कोर एन एस टी नाउ ए क्वेश्चन दैट मे अराइज इज दैट वाई शुड वी हैव टू कैटेगरीज ओके इफ आई राइट डाउन टू मेजर कैटेगरीज विच आर एन 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 अंडर नाउन बोथ आर अंडर नाउन ओके नाउन दिस इज ए कॉमन नाउन एंड एन 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 पी is for uh, proper noun okay now these proper nouns are essentially names and these are of course common nouns now uh, what is the point of distinguishing between them why should we keep two different tags for this one important reason is that in uh, natural language processing there is a task called named entity recognition okay or ner it is important to detect names in in the in languages that is because uh, the names are uh, not 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 translated okay on the other hand they are transliterated they are not translated but transliterated therefore it is essential for us to detect which noun in the text is a name and which noun is not a name if a noun is common noun then it should be translated for example the word kitab should be translated to book on the other hand a name like uh, sita written in english should be transliterated to uh, s i t a if you are going from hindi to english and from english to hindi it should be transliterated to sita one important difficulty that arises is that indian languages do not have capitalization for proper nouns okay so for example if we take this sentence puja ne puja ke liye phool kharida so puja ne puja ke liye phool kharida so the the first puja is the name of a person it is not worship the next puja puja ke liye for worshiping this puja is a common noun so the translation for this sentence will be puja bought flowers for puja for worship so you can see what is happening the first puja did not get transliterated translated it got transliterated to puja p u j a the second puja which means worshiping got translated to worship okay therefore it is very necessary that in the natural language text we detect which is the common noun puja and which is the proper noun that's why this named entity recognition task has become important and the idea is that when one is doing part of speech tagging since the annotators are placing marks on the words they are identifying the nouns they could do little more work with hardly any additional effort and place the tag of n and p proper noun with the noun so in this case if we take this sentence puja puja ne puja ke liye if we take this पार्ट पूजा ने पूजा के लिए फूल खरीदा देन वील हैव टू प्लेस द टैग ऑफ एन 
n and p for this puja and n n n for this puja worship. Okay. So, when this tagging is going on, we are already doing this task of proper name identification, which requires hardly any additional effort. This is the way it will go. So, that is why we have uh, a distinction between proper noun and uh, common noun and if we again look at the slide and see the categories under noun, we have common noun, proper noun, verbal noun and n lock. n lock is easy to identify because there is only a limited set of words which uh, appear in this list. Let us proceed to the next category of words. These are pronouns and demonstrative tags. Let us look at the two top level categories which are pronoun and demonstrative. There are symbols for them P R is the basic symbol, D M is the basic symbol here. For pronoun we see that the, the subcategories are personal pronoun, reflexive pronoun, relative pronoun, reciprocal pronoun and uh, W H word. Let us see the examples. Personal pronoun wo ma tum etc okay wo ma tum ma is first person singular number wo is third person singular number tum is second person singular number we is third person plural number okay these all these words refer to persons and these are pronouns that's why they are personal pronouns reflexive Reflexive refers to the pronouns referring to self. For example, apna swayam khud, okay, apna ghar, my own house, mera apna ghar, my own house, swayam, swayam ko samjho, understand yourself, khud, khud hi ja ke dekho, go yourself and see, okay. These are pronouns which are reflexive, they refer to self. And therefore, one has to place this symbol here underscore P R F that is reflexive. This P R before underscore is the basic category which is pronoun. Relative pronoun refers to those pronouns which link clauses. Okay. For example, Jo, Jis, Jab, Jaha, Wo Larka, Jo Kal Ayatha. अच्छा तैरता है वो लड़का जो कल आया था अच्छा तैरता है द बॉय हु केम यस्टरडे स्विम्स वेल सो दिस जो इज ए रिलेटिव प्रोनाउन क्वालिफाइंग ए नाउन स्टैंडिंग फॉर ए नाउन ओके सो दिस इज द रिलेटिव प्रोनाउन पी आर अंडर स्कोर पी आर एल एक्सप्रेसेस दिस फैक्ट रेसिप्रोकल इज ए काइंड ऑफ प्रोनाउन डिनोटिंग टू पर्सनस with reciprocal action between them paraspar aapas okay aap dono paraspar ko pehchante ho aap dono paraspar ko pehchante ho both of you know each other paraspar means each other aapas aap log aapas mein kya baat kar rahe ho what are you discussing between yourselves okay so aapas paraspar etc are reciprocal pronouns they involve two persons and here the symbol is pr underscore prc W H word is con, cub, kaha, etc. and these are also pronoun when they are used as a question. Con aaj a raha hai? Who is coming today? Kab tum jaoge? When will you go? Kaha aap rahte ho? Where do you stay? Okay. So, these are pronouns, they are used in question, they refer to nouns. Okay. Thus, we have these five categories under pronoun, subcategories under pronoun and their symbols are these P R underscore P R P, P R underscore P R F, P R underscore P R L, P R underscore P R C, P R underscore P R Q. Let us now spend a little time in understanding is it possible by a machine to distinguish between them, what clue is there? We write uh, let us say two or three of these categories. Okay. So, let us take the PRPRP case of let us say ma, wo, we and so on. Can a machine detect that these are personal pronouns and can it place this kind of tags which is PRPRP okay, for all of them. 
can the machine do it. The another tag let me take which is let us say relative pronoun which is P R P R L and there we have examples like Joe, Jab and so on and here uh, the tag should be P R P R L. Can a machine detect this? Yes, the immediate impression is that uh, the machine can detect them because ma is very unique. Look at the word and you know that the tag is P R P R P. Look at the word wa, the tag is P R P R P. Jo, job, all of them is the case, this is the case. If you take the word let us say paraspar, which is reciprocal, apas, P R P R C, it is easy to detect them. The reason is that uh, their forms are this, their forms are this. Okay. Now, we come to a difficulty. We come to this category called demonstrative and we will see that things are not so simple. Demonstratives are those entities which denote a particular noun. Okay. The basic symbol is D M. So, there are three kinds of demonstratives, uh, diactic, relative and W H word. Okay. So, the symbols are DMD, DMR and DMQ. So, DM underscore DMD, we have examples wa iha. Okay. What is the example here? Wa, wa larka, wa larka. Okay. This wa larka is a demonstrative because it is denoting a particular boy. This has to be distinguished between wa, wa so raha hai. Here, this is a pronoun. But wo larka kal jayega here it is a demonstrative okay now the question is in which case is wo a pronoun and in which case is it a demonstrative okay we have discussed this before this is not a simple problem you cannot simply say that if wo is followed by a noun then it will be a demonstrative otherwise it is a personal pronoun Okay. Similar is the case with relative demonstrative, jo, jis or w h word demonstrative, koi, kis, kon and so on. So, you see the difficulty here is that the categories pronoun and demonstrative share a lot of words. Okay. In other words, a word like wo can be both pronoun and demonstrative. Okay. Therefore, the question that arises is that how can a machine distinguish between these two words okay, and it has to distinguish these two words for their categories from the context, from the uh, symbols or the words which appear around them. Okay. So, we discuss this with an example. So, wo larka so raha hai okay. that boy sleeping is that is the gloss that boy sleeping is that boy is sleeping. So, this uh, wo uh, is that it is denoting a particular boy larka therefore, it is a demonstrative and what will a machine do? The machine will see that uh, this wo is followed by a noun and therefore, uh, this is a demonstrative. Okay. But, this simple rule might fail, will fail in many cases. For example, look at this wo cricket khel raha hai, he cricket playing, he cricket playing is. Okay. So, now look at this sentence, look at this sentence. Are not these two sentences uh, similar in terms of syntactic function? Wo, wo, larka, cricket both nouns. So, khel both verbs, raha hai, raha hai, playing, sleeping, continuous, present tense continuous aspect. So, how will a machine know that this wo is demonstrative, whereas this wo is a pronoun? How will it know? So, you can see that this requires deep semantics. Okay? You can see that this wo cannot be a qualifier for cricket, it cannot denote this noun, it cannot be demonstrative for this noun because of semantic reasons, deep semantic reasons. Therefore, a simple rule like noun following a demonstrative or pronoun 
will tilt the balance in favor of noun that you can say probabilistically, but this rule is not completely infallible. Then a simple minded rule could be this word is a demonstrative and not a pronoun, but we see that this rule fails in this example work cricket khel rai this war is not a qualifier for cricket okay? and there are deep semantic reasons why this war is not a demonstrative for cricket. There are deep semantic reasons okay? and those clues are not available to the machine at this level, at the level of pause tagging. So, this is the main challenge of part of speech tagging where we know that uh, different categories for a particular word cannot be obtained with complete certainty from a limited context. So, if you look at the slide once again, uh, there are these pronoun categories and these demonstratives and we find that both these categories share many words between them. In fact, everything in demonstrative is also contained, most of the words here are also contained in the pronoun category words and it requires uh, large context and uh, complicated processing to distinguish between the categories identifying the correct tag. Okay. So, I think I have uh, impressed upon you this uh, point that part of speech tagging within a category or across categories is often not a simple problem to solve because of this kind of ambiguity. We proceed further look at other tags. We come to the second most important category of words called verbs. Verbs denote actions and uh, the basic symbol for verbs is V. There are many examples here from Hindi like gira, gaya, sona, hasa, hai, raha. These are different verbs. Gira is to fall, gaya is to go, sona is to sleep, hasta is the uh, is from the root laugh, ha is an auxiliary copular verb, raha is to stay and so on. So, all these are verbal categories and under this you see there are many, many different categories, subcategories, but Hindi retains only a few. There are uh, again deep reasons for them, we will discuss them slowly. First is the category, the most important category, the main verb. So, for example, uh, gira pair se phal gira, a fruit fell from the tree, gaya, Ram school gaya, Ram vidyale gaya, Ram went to the school, sona, sona, raat ko sona chahiye, one should sleep at night, hasta, wo hasta hai, he is laughing. Now, there are other subtypes which are shown to be cancelled, I have purposefully shown them to be cancelled. But before we discuss them, we take the next most important category in Hindi, namely auxiliary verbs, hai, raha, hua, etc. Auxiliary verbs are also known as helping verbs. They go with the main verb and uh, produce some attributes on them, technically called they assign uh, aspectual information and mood information sometimes on the main verb. Okay. So, for example, uh, I can say but per se fall gira, fruit fell from the tree, this is past tense. Now, I can make use of hai to change the tense, okay. per se fall gir raha hai. So, this is a present continuous tense and showing an activity which is taking place now, per se fall gir raha hai, the fruit is falling from the tree. So, I have made use of two auxiliaries here, hai and raha. Hua also similarly can be an auxiliary. Okay. So, these are helping verbs which change some of the aspects of the main verb. Now, we come to these categories which are shown to be cancelled. So, finite verb, non-finite verb, infinite verb and gerundial verb. Okay. So, Finite verbs are our ordinary verbs. Okay. Verbs, the technical meaning of uh, the technical definition of finite verb is the following. I will write it down. Verb, 
finite and non finite okay finite verbs the most important property of finite verbs is they carry tense okay so if i say fal gira this is carrying the tense information namely the past tense information in the form so it's a finite verb so this is uh, the finite form but if i say fal gir kar fat gaya fal gira means fruit fell fal gir kar fat gaya is fruit fell and burst fruit fell and burst so this gir kar doesn't carry the tense information the time information is not contained in this the time information is contained in fat ga okay which is the uh, past tense activity and in fact it is contained only in ga ga shows the activity took place in the past girkar doesn't show it so that's why it is called a non finite form okay and gira is the finite form which is carrying the tense information if we come to the categories once again now vf is finite form non finite is the form which does not carry tense in finite form is also a kind of non finite form gerundial verb is again non finite form we will discuss them later for the moment it suffices to say that verbs have two different forms finite and non finite now why is it that hindi doesn't want to distinguish between finite and non finite form it doesn't show different categories by which marking can be placed for finiteness and non finiteness let us discuss this we have to say that uh, the finite form and non finite form are important for carrying the tense information now in hindi in general from a small context of the words around it it is not possible in general to distinguish between the non finite category and the finite category okay we will have to take these examples little later the reason is that we have to understand the properties of the verbs okay and their forms to be able to correctly identify finite and non finite categories so we'll postpone this discussion for a moment and uh, we'll come back to this when we discuss the properties of the verbs okay we proceed further with the remark that in hindi we have only two major categories main verb and auxiliary verb now we come to relatively easier categories namely adjectives adverbs and conjunction tags again the examples are from hindi adjective is given the symbol jj this is inconsistency with the pen tree bank tag pen tree bank tag is for english and this has become the most popular tag for producing annotation of english language corpora the examples of adjective tags are sundar acha bada sundar is beautiful acha is good bada is big so these are adjectives which qualify nouns next category is the adverb category now here we have words like jaldi and tez which means uh, quickly both these words mean quickly they uh, indicate the manner in which a an action is taken play taking place so they qualify a verb therefore they are adverbs okay but there is a problem here which is a classical problem for adjective and adverb adjectives can function as adverb okay so for example khel acha chal raha hai if i take the sentence khel acha chal raha hai i'll write it down khel acha chal raha hai play good going on is okay the play is going on well or good in this case this good or well is uh, specifying 
the manner in which an action is taking place, therefore, it is an adverb. So, the correct tag for this is R B and if it is uh, qualifying a noun, then the correct tag is J J. So, here we encounter another case of uh, difficult ambiguity. If a word is qualifying a noun, okay, then it is an adjective. If the word is denoting the manner of an action, then it is an adverb. But the problem is that in Hindi and in many languages, the same word can function as both adjective and adverb. Now, it is non-trivial to identify if they are adjective or adverb in general, because the noun can be at a distance from the adjective. Okay. Wo sundar larka hai, sundar wo jo larka hai. Okay. and therefore, the adjective and the noun cannot be adjacent, may, may or may not be adjacent to each other. Therefore, it may be difficult to immediately identify whether this adjective is actually an adjective or an adverb. This brings us to an important discussion on part of speech tagging. Okay. Let us write this down and it is a very fundamental point in part of speech tagging. This is uh, so important that we would like to spend some time understanding this issue. The problem is a good important question, functional category versus lexical category, functional category versus lexical category. What is the functional category of a word and what is its lexical category? Let us understand this point which often leads to complications in part of speech tagging. We took this example of khel, achha, chal raha hai. The play is going on well, the play is going on well, khel achha chal raha hai. And uh, this sentence Ram achha larka hai. Ram, which is a common Indian name, Ram is a good boy. In this case, Acha qualifies Larka, which is boy, therefore, it is an adjective. We will call give it the tag JJ. This Acha is a manner for the verb going on. So, this is the tag RB adverb. All right. So, when we look at achha in isolation. Okay. We do not see its context, the neighboring words. We just look at the word in isolation. What is the category that comes to our mind when we look at achha? When you look at achha, the first impression is that here is an adjective. Okay. And when achha is recorded in the dictionary, when it appears in the lexicon, the first category that will be mentioned for it in the dictionary will be adjective. Okay. So, this is known as the lexical category. Some dictionaries will also mention this as adverb, many dictionaries actually will mention this as adverb also, but the first and foremost category for the word is adjective. This is known as the lexical category. When it plays a particular role in the sentence, it may or may not retain its lexical category. So, we took this example here, khel achha chal raha hai, achha is adjective, but in this particular sentence, it is functioning as an adverb. So, here achha is functioning as adverb, though its predominant lexical category is adjective. So, this kind of adjective adverb ambiguity is very common in natural language and the machine has to resolve from the contextual words. Many times, this kind of function versus lexical category disambiguation is not possible in a limited context and there, there is no point in having two separate tags. Okay. So, this is uh, an important point. So, we write down one of the considerations for part of speech tags. The question we are asking is, how should we design the pause tag set. Okay. 
what considerations go behind pause tax? Okay. How should one design the pause tax? What considerations go behind them? Clearly, you can see that if two pause tags can be disambiguated only with lot of complexity, there is no point retaining both of them. This is a very, very fundamental principle of part of speech tag design. Okay. We call it fundamental principle. I read it once again. If two pause tags can be disambiguated only with lot of complexity, there is no point retaining both of them. Okay. So, what we are saying is that at the part of speech tag level, this is the second principle. At the level of pause tagging, we have only the information from the word and a limited window around it. So, design the tag set keeping this in mind. Okay. So, if we have two pause tags T 1 and T 2 and in general T 1 and T 2 cannot be distinguished only by looking at the word or from a small window around the word, then there is just no point keeping those pause tags, because at the level of pause tagging you will not be able to distinguish one from the other. Okay. So, uh, the example that we took of demonstrative and pronoun for some words, it is very difficult to decide whether they are demonstrative or pronoun just from the word or from a limited window around the word. It is very difficult. So, at the level of part of speech tagging, there is no point okay, giving those words or keeping for those words two tags. Okay. And these two tags will only be there for idealistic reasons. Okay. They are not practical, practically they are impossible to distinguish from each other. Okay. So, this consideration goes into part of speech tag design. So, the two principles that we have talked about are at the level of pause tagging, we can only distinguish from the word and the limited context and the other principle is that uh, if the two pause tags can be distinguished only with lot of complexity, then there is no point keeping both of them. So, a diagram is helpful at this point of time, which I will draw sketchily. This is a NLP layer diagram. Part of speech tag is a layer <coughs> which is placed on the text and uh, it is supported by the morphology layer, which means word form. Morphology layer is word form analysis. Okay. Above that is the part of speech tag layer. Above that is the parsing layer. So, part of, part of speech tag layer can only make use of information below it or at the same level it cannot make use of information which is above it like parsing and meaning semantics. Okay. So, the part of speech tag has to be designed keeping this point in mind that it has to make use of words and a limited window around the word. We will take up these important issues in the next lecture.